I'd like to welcome you to this launch of the new 2021 uh, version of the ICC rules of international arbitration. 2021 is a special year. It is the last year of my presidency as president of the ICC Court of International Arbitration. Uh, some of you may be aware that we will have a new president coming in as from the 1st of July of this year. Uh, the ICC can be very proud to have set up a unique selection process for uh, the election of my successor. It has been completely transparent. We have constituted an independent selection committee constituted by highly uh, reputable arbitration practitioners, uh, which terms of reference was published on the court's website. The group has uh, held uh, a number of uh, interviews and meetings, uh, and at the outset of that process, it has selected uh, our colleague Claudia Solomon to become the next uh, president of the court as from the 1st of July. And Claudia is an outstanding practitioner. Of course, she's very well known in the arbitration world and her presidency promises to be uh, a great, a great uh, step forward, uh, another great step forward for the ICC court. 2021 uh, also promises to be a great year for the court. Uh, we have had uh, in 2020 a record number of cases on top of 920 new cases, which is an all-time record for the ICC. Uh, last record was last year with uh, 868 new cases. This year is significantly on top of that. And that shows that the court is growing. The court is growing on a regular uh, fashion. It is growing in a sustainable fashion and it is strongly growing, uh, which is of course very encouraging and which is a testament to the success of the reforms that have been implemented in the past years uh, by the court. We have also, we will have also this year the opening of our fifth uh, case management office uh, overseas, apart Paris, of course, in Abu Dhabi, uh, which is a very important step forward for the court, in particular for our presence in the Gulf and in the Middle East. Uh, with uh, uh, ADGM, Abu Dhabi Global Markets, which has supported us in this effort in a great way, we will have in Abu Dhabi now uh, a, a team of the Secretariat administering cases, and that will be a great platform for the expansion of our services and our presence in the region. And 2021, of course, is also the year when uh, the new rules will uh, start being applied as from the 1st of uh, January. The new ICC rules are a substantial uh, improvement uh, and increase of the efficiency and transparency of uh, ICC uh, arbitration. And I would like to briefly outline some of the main features of uh, the rules. So the first line of policy which has presided these uh, amendments uh, is to make uh, ICC arbitration more uh, effective. And we have done that in several ways in the new rules. The first is for cases of limited uh, value to increase the threshold for the opt-out application of the uh, expedited rules. As you know, the expedited rules were introduced in the ICC rules in 2017. It is a system which provides for the appointment of a sole arbitrator and for the mandatory making of the award in six months from the case management conference. Uh, it is a tool which has worked very well. We had, we had uh, close to 90 awards made under the APP so far. Uh, all of them, save in uh, limited exceptions, have been made within the time limits. So the system proves that it works very well and it offers to users and to parties the possibility of obtaining an award in a much shorter time limit and with reduced cost. And this is why, based on the experience, based on the success of the expedited rules so far, we have decided to expand the scope of application of this uh, procedural uh, tool by increasing the threshold for its opt-out application from two to three uh, millions as from the 1st of January of 2021. Of course, the expedited rules do not apply retroactively, and that means that uh, the new threshold, three million, as was the case for the two million thresholds in 2017, only applies to arbitrations introduced after the entry into force of the new rules, which is the 1st of January of 2021 based on arbitration agreements that post-date uh, the entry into force of the new rules, i.e. that means that uh, the new threshold will apply to arbitrations introduced after the 1st of January based on uh, arbitration clauses that 
uh, post date the 1st of uh, January. Um, I am sure that uh, uh, this will contribute to making ICC arbitration uh, even more uh, effective for, uh, for these cases of uh, limited uh, value. We have also introduced in the rules a number of new procedural devices uh, which are particularly adapted for uh, large, complex, multi-party, multi-contract arbitrations. We have introduced a new provision for uh, the joinder of an additional party, in particular after uh, the uh, appointment uh, of the arbitral tribunal, which was not provided in the uh, previous versions of the rules. So the tribunal can now decide to join an additional party, uh, provided that this additional party consents to the constitution of the arbitral tribunal and whenever there is one to the terms of uh, reference. We have also uh, amended Article 10 on consolidation in a way which makes it more flexible. Uh, we are now in particular allowing consolidations of cases between different parties when all claims are made uh, based on the same arbitration agreements and that will uh, provide for uh, additional flexibility in the management of uh, large uh, multi-contract cases. The second line of policy was uh, to provide for greater transparency. Transparency has been a very important line of policy for the court uh, uh, since I took the presidency in 2015. Uh, we have introduced a number of important uh, reforms in this regard, uh, starting with the provision of reasons, starting with uh, the publication of the composition of uh, all ICC tribunals on our, on our website. We are now proceeding on, the, on that same line by introducing in the rules a requirement for the parties to disclose the uh, existence and identity of any third party funder uh, that intervenes uh, in the case. Uh, that is done in order to allow uh, arbitrators to uh, uh, um, to make disclosures if disclosures are to be made. So this new provision is aimed at assisting arbitrators in fulfilling their duty to uh, disclose. Of course, as you all know, uh, third party funding is a phenomenon that is growing in arbitration uh, and it is something that we need to address in order to ensure that the presence of a funder is completely transparent and that any conflict of interest that the presence of a funder uh, may uh, create uh, is uh, properly disclosed in order for the parties to, exer to exercise their fundamental right to uh, uh, make an objection or to uh, mount uh, a challenge. We have also decided to codify in the rules uh, the provisions relating to the provision of reasons for the court's decisions, uh, which uh, were uh, already present in the uh, note to the parties and arbitral tribunals. But we have thought that this policy of providing reasons uh, as, uh, as soon as any party requests uh, uh, reasons was uh, important enough to uh, move from the note to the rules uh, these uh, provisions. Uh, this being said, the practice does not change. Uh, it remains that any party can request the provision of uh, reasons for uh, court decisions, not only for decisions made on challenges, but also court decisions relating to consolidations, for example, or to uh, prima facie jurisdictional decisions, the decisions that are made based on Article 6.4 of the rules on uh, whether the arbitration should proceed in presence of a jurisdictional objection uh, as to one or more of the parties or one or more uh, of uh, the claims. And um, because we are talking now of uh, uh, transparency, of course, uh, uh, I should mention that 2021 will also be the year when our policy to publish uh, ICC arbitral awards will start. Uh, as you uh, may remember, we have decided back in 2018 that all ICC awards made as from the 1st of January of 2019 would be published after two years unless one of the parties objects or of course unless there is an, a confidentiality provision in the contract or in the arbitration clause. Uh, we have postponed by three months uh, the start of this uh, program of publication because of technical reasons, but it will start on the 1st of April of this year and we will start publishing on the 1st of April a bunch of uh, awards made in January 2019 
in respect of which none of the parties has made an objection to uh, publication. The third line of policy uh, is to ensure uh, better protection of the parties' rights to uh, a fair process in the rules. And we have done that, first of all, by introducing a new provision concerning uh, the introduction of a new party representative in the course of the uh, arbitration. That new provision says that, essentially, whenever a party introduces a new uh, representative in the case, uh, in the course of the arbitration, if uh, that new representative generates a conflict of interest with one or more of the arbitrators, then the tribunal can decide to take measures in order to exclude that new party representative from all or part of the arbitration in order to uh, preserve the integrity of the uh, arbitration. Uh, this provision has been drawn from uh, the IBA guidelines on party representation in international arbitration. Uh, some of you may remember we have already introduced three years ago in the note uh, a clause encouraging uh, arbitral tribunals and parties to draw inspiration from the IBA uh, guidelines on party representation. We have now introduced in the note that specific, uh, in the rules, sorry, that specific provision allowing tribunals to, ex to exclude a new counsel from the arbitration uh, and that will avoid situations like we have seen in the court in several instances uh, in which uh, challenge, challenges are made uh, against uh, an arbitrator based on a conflict that uh, is caused by the introduction of a new counsel in the course of the arbitration. We have also introduced in the rules a new clause uh, on unconscionable arbitration uh, agreements. Uh, that new clause uh, allows the court in exceptional circumstances and whenever uh, applying the arbitration agreement uh, would lead to a serious risk of annulment of the award at the seat of the arbitration to disregard uh, this uh, clause and appoint all arbitrators. The typical situation would be a clause in which uh, one of the parties would have the right to unilaterally, uh, unilaterally appoint the uh, arbitral tribunal. In such a case, the court will be able to appoint itself the arbitral tribunal in order to avoid the risk of unfairness that would be uh, caused by uh, such uh, a clause in view of uh, its uh, likely nullity at the seat of the uh, arbitration. We uh, are then uh, placing a lot of focus on uh, virtual arbitrations. Uh, of course, we are uh, in a period of uh, pandemic. Uh, uh, hearings are taking, taking place uh, virtually. Uh, and we have felt that there was need to introduce more clarity in the rules as to the powers of the arbitral tribunal to order, to decide, in absence of an agreement by all parties, that the hearing uh, may take place by uh, remote means of, uh, of communication, such as video conferences. Uh, the text of the previous uh, version of the rules uh, was uh, unclear, uh, although uh, uh, it was never a question that ICC tribunals do have that power, but because there was some level of misunderstanding, in particular due to the introduction based on an uh, inaccurate translation in the English uh, version of the rules from French uh, uh, of uh, uh, provision saying that uh, uh, parties should be heard uh, 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 adversarially, and that was translated in the English, English version by reference to an in-person hearing, and that was understood sometimes as referring to a, a physical hearing, which was not the case, and we have made that clear in the new version of Article 26 of the rules. It is, not, it is now very clear that ICC arbitral tribunals do have the power to decide that hearings will take place remotely, even if uh, all parties do not uh, agree. We are also uh, removing uh, uh, any presumption uh, uh, in favor of paper filing. Uh, the rules have been amended in order to uh, uh, provide for uh, electronic submissions of all submissions made in the arbitration. And we will, uh, moving forward in the month to come, uh, uh, offer to the parties to ICC arbitration uh, a completely modernized platform for the submission uh, of memorials and exhibits uh, electronically on a common uh, platform, which will soon be uh, available. And finally, we have introduced in the rules uh, a number of provisions concerning specifically uh, investor state uh, uh, arbitrations uh, whenever these arbitrations are based on treaty. We are 
uh, first of all now providing that in these instances, again this is limited to cases uh, when uh, uh, the arbitration is based on treaty, uh, no arbitrator can share the same nationality as that of any of the parties. Uh, and this is uh, uh, of course um, based on and justified by the specific nature of these arbitrations uh, where arbitral tribunals uh, may have to cast a judgment on the legitimacy of uh, legislation or regulation that is made by the state uh, in the general uh, interest. We are also codifying uh, now in the rules uh, something which was the practice of the court since 2012, which is the fact that the uh, provisions on emergency arbitration are not available. Uh, in the context of an investor state arbitration based on treaty. That has been the case since 2012, but it was not expressed as such uh, in the rules. And for the sake of transparency, we have wanted to uh, introduce clarity uh, on this. And we uh, are now also in the note, in the new version of the note, which has been published as well and which is now available uh, on the court's website. We are now providing that arbitrators should uh, in ISDS cases based on treaty, include in their CV and make a CV available to the parties in which uh, the parties can see all uh, past uh, ISDS treaty-based cases in which uh, an arbitrator has participated as counsel, as arbitrator or as expert. And this is, of course, again, provided in order to allow the parties to uh, verify that there is no, uh, in particular, issue conflict uh, question uh, with any of the arbitrators and again for the sake of more uh, clarity. So overall this is uh, a set of uh, limited changes to the rules but changes which will contribute to making the ICC rules uh, more efficient, more transparent and to better protect uh, the parties right to a completely fair uh, process in ICC arbitration. Thank you very much.